This gamer phone has seen some real rage. The back is obliterated with the impact having bent the frame, with the display miraculously remaining undamaged. I acquired this ZTE Red Magic 6 in a phone lot I purchased for 145 US dollars. With five phones in the lot, you could say the per unit price was just $29. $29 for a Snapdragon 888, 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. I'd say that was quite the bargain, even in this condition. But can this obscure gaming phone be repaired? Despite the obvious damage, the wide angle camera is also faulty, with a dark spot in the corner and a hazy picture. Its external camera lens has been broken, which has allowed dirt to enter. Maybe a quick clean with some alcohol and a cotton swab will fix it. Unfortunately, it didn't. So we'll need to investigate further. It's over to my heat plate for a few minutes where the heat can work away at softening the adhesive holding the back panel in place. Given the severity of the damage, its removal will be more complex. While a suction cup would normally be used to lift the glass, the broken edges mean it will not be as easy to slide around the pick. So I'll need to use a jimmy tool to instead pry up the glass where necessary, being careful not to cause any further damage to the frame. Underneath is a flex cable attaching to the back panel. What I first thought must be for wireless charging is in fact for LED lighting on the back glass which isn't visible when you have a glass back as broken as this one. Once its ZIF connector is unplugged, the back is free. Immediately, I see a red liquid indicator. This has likely only been tripped as a result of the broken camera lens, which has allowed moisture inside. Once the NFC module is removed, we can see no immediate signs of water damage. What we now have access to is the cameras, and it's obvious which one's damaged as of all the dirt surrounding it. But there's a bigger problem. I couldn't find a replacement camera. While there was a few listings for the Red Magic 6 cameras, they were only selling the main camera, never the ultra wide. With no seller of Red Magic parts, I messaged having one. And if you can't find parts on AliExpress for a Chinese phone, you know there's no hope of finding one. So we have to improvise. Can I fix this camera myself? After all, it's only the lens that's damaged. The internal side of this one looks perfect, so it's just the other side causing our issues. I thought I could try cleaning it again now that it was free from the camera sensor. Screwing the lens back in and giving the phone a quick test, you can see there is no change. So, we need to try something else. Under the microscope, you can see the tiny scratches that are causing the hazy effect on the camera. I thought some plastic polish would help. After applying a small amount, I could use a soft cloth to polish the lens, hopefully removing the scratches. I did this a number of times for several minutes before putting the lens back on for a test. It doesn't look all that different, but possibly a bit shinier. Once screwed back in, we'll be able to see the difference. We've made it worse. I don't know how that was possible, but we did it. I believe because polishing will always introduce scratches, there isn't really a way to fix up a scratched lens. It might look good to the human eye, but the camera sensor will always pick up the imperfections. So for my last attempt, I'll try and find a replacement lens. Of course, there wasn't any for sale online, so I thought I'd try my luck on a few spare cameras I had. This particular one is from a Galaxy Flip. The lens unscrews in the same way, but it's too small for the Red Magic phone. And while I got an image, it was out of focus. That's when I realized not only would it have to be the same thread, but also have to work with the sensor and be a wide angle lens. That's something I wasn't going to find. So not being able to fix it or find a replacement camera, the only thing left to do is an ultra wide delete. Having accidentally done this while the phone was switched on, you can see no camera loads when you switch to the 0.5x mode. But like all things in IT, you just need to turn it off and on again. Now pressing the 0.5x zoom, the camera works with no issues, even though there's no camera installed. But how? Well, it stumped me at first too, but what's actually happening is that without an ultra-wide camera present, it's switching to the macro lens, leaving us with two working cameras. It's not perfect, but it's better than leaving that mess of an ultra-wide camera installed. One part I was able to find was a new back panel for just 20 US dollars, or around 32 Australian. Included is a new heatsink, but not the LED flash or extra lighting. 
those will need to be salvaged from the old back panel. So it's time to go back over to the heat plate for the back glass, this time to soften the adhesive holding the LEDs in place. I'll start by prying up the LED flash before the remaining cosmetic LEDs that are used to light up the back panel. Underneath is a piece of rubber glued to the back. We'll also transfer that while we're at it. I'll attach it to the new glass using liquid adhesive, loosely positioning it into place before attaching the remainder of the LEDs. This lower diffuser's blackout material disintegrated when it came in contact with alcohol and made quite a mess. Still, it should do just fine now that it's all cleaned up. The last thing to attach is the LED flash that sits below the cameras. One thing we've yet to rectify is the bent frame. I've managed to unbend a few devices before, including an iPad. This was done by simply bending the device back the other way, going a little more than needed as metal tends to bounce back. But this one wasn't cooperating. It's looking like it will just snap instead. And before I go too far and break the frame and display, which would cost me an additional $250, I'm just going to stop here and leave it as is. It's only a cosmetic issue after all, but to ensure the back glass sticks down and curves to the bend, I'll be using liquid adhesive as it'll set hard enough to keep the back panel down. Before it can be applied, I'll need to remove the old pre-installed adhesive before applying our new stuff. I'll also reapply a drop of thermal paste on top of the motherboard shield as was done originally. This makes contact to the heatsink pre-installed on the back glass. Air is drawn in through the fan on the left, up through the heatsink on the back panel and out the right side of the phone. After attaching the flex cable for the rear glass, I noticed I had yet to install the NFC antenna. No problem, I can install it quickly. I also ripped off the cable for the wide angle camera and placed it back inside the phone so it looked as though nothing was amiss from the outside. With that, I can attach the back glass, securing it with clamps and rubber bands, allowing the new glass to contour with the imperfect frame. I'll need to let the glue cure before taking these all off. Once removed, we'll find the glass has been molded to the frame. Once the plastic protective film is removed, we can clean up the glue residue that seeped out the sides. Lastly, removing the scratched up plastic screen protector. And we're done. So this is it, a Red Magic 6 for only 49 US dollars. It's far from perfect with a scratched and damaged frame and non-functional ultra-wide camera. But this is a result of having few available replacement parts. But even so, we've still made this a functional phone worth a lot more than what we've paid for it. It's got great hardware specifications and an ultra fast refresh rate display that will sure appeal to many. Without the ultra wide camera, the 0.5x zoom instead switches to the macro lens, which has a fixed focal length, meaning it's blurry when looking at objects far away, but very clear for close up subjects. And on that note, this has been a huge FPS video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.